Welcome to week four of our online academy. This week, we're going to talk about infection control in the clinical therapeutic setting. But before we do that, I want to recap on a topic that has come up a number of times in questions. And the subject that has come up a lot is how to accommodate the kyphotic spine in the standard or straight back chair. And really, the onus is on me to let you know that I don't believe that you can accommodate a fixed kyphotic curve in a fixed back chair or in a standard chair. Because I want to take you back to the very, one of the very first slides that I put up. And it is how to maximize the contact with the seating surface. This is one of our goals of sitting, is to get as much of the body in contact with the chair as possible. Now, when we do that, we stabilize the body and we reduce the forces that work on the body. And we did a seminar on that earlier. So in the standard chair or in the fixed back chair, as you can see from this diagram, it's not possible to accommodate that curved uh, spine. So to demonstrate this point, I would like to take you through a case study of Billy. Now here is Billy sitting in a straight back chair and when we look at Billy from the side, we can see that he falls to the right hand side. And when we look at him again, we can see that he has a very marked kyphosis. Now this is not correctable in this chair. So in order to accommodate this, we need to put him in a chair that's going to support his spine and also offer tilt and space. When Billy was sitting in this posture, he had difficulty swallowing, difficulty feeding, his oxygen saturation levels were very low. When we were able to support his spine and put him in tilt and space, we were able to improve all those physiological and psychological functionings. So really the message that I would like to get across to Janice and Julie and all of you who are coming up against this problem is that the onus is on you as the clinician to source a chair that's going to accommodate the spine, going to uh, spread the weight over a large area and to reduce the, uh, the sliding and the forces that work on the body. This is the reason why I got into clinical therapeutic seating in the first instance, because I felt that I, it was up to me to improve these people's posture. And you cannot do that in the fixed standard chairs that are currently available. So let's get started on our main seminar for today. And the subject is infection control. And this is a very topical subject and something that's very important. And I wanted to uh, actually speak about it early on in the webinar series because it's so important at the minute. So what are the risks? And a press release by the World Health Organization recently stated that there is evidence that these viruses and infections can be transmitted through direct physical contact between people. Now, we're all aware of that. But the most important thing from our equipment provider's point of view that we must be also be aware of is that there is the possibility of fomites, which is when the virus is on an inanimate surface. And these viruses could be harbored or transmitted by equipment uh, used in the healthcare setting. And they could stay viable for a few hours up to a few days. And the general consensus at the minute is that these viruses could stay viable for 72 hours on a piece of equipment. This means that if we're hiring or renting a piece of equipment or one of our chairs, we would ensure that there's a three day space between one client and another client using it. And that's very important. Clinical therapeutic seating is a class one medical device, but historically it didn't receive the same scrutiny as other medical devices. However, this is changing and the medical devices regulations are getting much more strict and manufacturers are being asked to be much more responsible and they're being asked very tough questions about their equipment. So what are the tough questions that you as the clinician should be asking manufacturers and suppliers? So first of all, is the equipment that you're using designed to be easily cleaned and disinfectant? Does the manufacturer or the importer have cre credible evidence to back this up? Is there ample focus on infection control in the selection of products that are being used and recycled over and over again with high risk patients? 
For example, we do a rental program uh, with our chairs. So it's really important that our chairs are easily cleaned, that they're made from vinyl, and that they can be disinfected very thoroughly. You need to be asking these questions. We want to ask, look, can the equipment review groups, scrutiny of the products be improved to reduce the risk amidst this global pandemic? Should the use of products with difficult to clean materials be reconsidered? And are the risk management policies and the test procedures conducted by manufacturers and importers sufficient to meet the requirements of the medical devices uh, regulations? So these are the tough questions as clinicians that you should be asking the suppliers of equipment. So what should you be looking for? So when you look at a piece of uh, furniture or a piece of equipment, you should be asking the question, the material needs to be water resistant and stain resistant. It needs to be capable of withstanding disinfection with a chlorine based disinfectant. And vinyl is preferable as it's easy to clean and it's also durable and robust. So let's talk about vinyl versus fabric. Tests carried out on hard to clean fabrics concluded that these fabrics, for example, um, upholstery type fabrics, harboured foreign substances deep within the structure of the fabric, while the chieftain vinyl and the dartex material were almost completely free of this substance. In the healthcare environment, these findings could show that a pathogenic could be harboured deep within the fabric. So when you're considering the type of uh, fabric that's on the chair, you really need to be considering vinyl versus fabric because the vinyl is much more easily cleaned. So I'm doing a little experiment today based on infection prevention and control. And this is an experiment that they use in medical school to teach people about hand hygiene. So what we're going to do is I'm going to spray this uh, UV uh, uh, lotion onto a fabric and onto a seating matters um, vinyl and dartex surface. And what this demonstrates is this lotion will light up under UV light. So it's very easy to see where that is. And then again here on the fabric. So now what I'm going to use is an antibacterial Dettol surface cleaner. And on the back of this, it actually says it can be used for, kill, for killing coronavirus. So what I'm going to do is thoroughly uh, spray down each surface and I'm going to clean it off. As best I can. Okay. So just to be fair and to make it as fair a test as possible, I'm going to give it a really thorough clean on both surfaces. Now, let's see the impact um, of cleaning both of these materials. So you can see with the fabric that the uh, fluid and germs and bacteria can sink deep into the surface and it is very, very difficult to clean. So that UV light is showing up the areas that would be very difficult to clean. And if we compare that now to the vinyl, you can see hardly any of the residue left. There may be the odd little bit on the fabric right here, but you'll see that it's much, much more effective and much more easily clean. Yeah. So bear that in mind when you're thinking on infection prevention and control in your care facility, in your hospital, or in your equipment loan store, because this is by fact a very, very difficult material to clean. The bacteria fluids will sink right down into the surface, the structure of this fabric, and it's very, very difficult to remove that. Where over here, we can see it's very, very easily to clean, very simple and easy uh, wipe down surface. So producers of the vinyl upholstery fabric have known for some time that their materials are easier to clean and disinfect than fabric upholstery. And as a result, this makes it easier for healthcare environments to prevent the spread of bacteria and to assist with infection control. 
manufacturers and suppliers of products like our clinical therapeutic seating who supply into long-term care homes and community equipment recycling stores and hospitals should use materials that are suitable in preventing the spread of bacteria. Materials such as the cheap vinyl upholstery or the Dartex performance fabric can be infused with an antibacterial substance which can hinder the growth of bacteria. So the choice of material is really, really important in helping to uh, in, uh, disinfect the chairs and helping to reduce the spread of infection. There have been lots of studies and research done into vinyl versus fabric and I'm going to talk you through one here but we also have a booklet which you'll be able to access on our website and all the references to the studies uh, that have been carried out are there. So in November 2000, the Infection Control Today highlighted the results of a study. The study found that drug resistant bacteria can survive and be transmitted through patient contact on fabric upholstery in the healthcare setting. However, while vinyl chairs in the test were contaminated with the bacteria, it did not survive in the vinyl upholstery. This led the manufacturers, or sorry, this led the researchers to conclude that an easily cleanable non-porous material such as vinyl can be significant in infection control in healthcare settings. The research highlights the importance of being able to disinfect a person's room when he or she leaves and to disinfect the equipment that they have been using. So if you want more information on this, go to our website and you can access the guide there. So what can we do to protect our patients and our service users? So first of all, ask your supplier about the equipment's infection control policy. Ask for evidence of how the fabrics and the materials in the product can be cleaned and disinfectant. Ask for evidence of their ISO certification. Ask for evidence of their compliance with MDR regulations. Have a critical look at the equipment and the healthcare chairs you are using. Could it be easily cleaned and disinfectant if the person using it contracted coronavirus or a similar transmittable disease? So, having said all that, cleaning is not that complicated. It's actually very simple. And with the correct surface, especially vinyl, cleaning is actually very easy. And the three things to remember is that you can do the cleaning with warm scrubby water, bleach, or 70% alcohol solution. The viruses are broken down by those simple tools. A soap, alcohol solution, and bleach all break up the proteins that help keep the viruses active and therefore can deactivate the virus on a material or on a surface. However, it's really important that you rinse and dry the surface because wiping alone may actually spread the virus. So just to emphasize, cleaning isn't complicated, but you must do it right and do it often. So that takes us to the end of week four and the very important subject of infection control. This is something that each one of us must take personal responsibility for. We have written the Clinician's Guide to Infection Control, which you can access from our website. Seating Matters takes this subject very seriously and if you have any comments or questions, you can submit them below. At Seating Matters, we are here to help you and your patients. So if you have a patient that you feel would benefit from what you learned today, you can set up a person-to-person -person demonstration or an online demonstration to view our products and put this into practice.